Hey guys, Kev here, and <clears throat> I thought I'd do a disassembly on the uh, Model 1 button lock here from American Blade Works. I also wanted to show it one more time and talk about my experience the last couple days with it. Um, first and foremost, I absolutely love this knife. Uh, they did such a fabulous job on it, and um, it's only gotten better. Uh, it had a little bit of stick when it arrived, and it still has a little, but it honestly, for the most part, just pops in, you give it a little pressure, and it comes down. And I think that's a good thing, because it means um, that it's locked up, you know? And it's not like too hard to push that it bothers you, and usually it's honestly uh, a lot easier to push. Right now it's being a little sticky, I don't know, because I'm on camera, but um, it's... To me, it's no issue at all. I enjoy uh, fidgeting with it. And uh, yeah, so if you have a big issue with stick on button locks, uh, maybe avoid it. But it's like a pro tech in a sense where, you know, it's just going to have that. It might wear in a little bit over time, but um, it's not anything dramatic. Um, it sometimes sounds like it, but uh no issue for me. So I love it. Uh, ergonomic in the hand, comfortable, choked up, great uh, grind, great edge, magna cut at I think 63, 64, if I remember correctly, and uh, made in the United States, which, you know, all of that together makes it really cool. So let's see what's inside. I'll grab my bit driver and our little kit here. I'm guessing we're going to have a spring on it, and uh, it should be fun. So I think this is actually a T like eight or something, a T9. It's like a weird size. So let me grab my little bag of bits. Uh, pretty sure that's the case. Let me grab a 10 just to see. This is a 10. Let's see if that fits. Ah, 10 fits. A little bit of wiggle room in there. But I don't think a 15 would go in. Oh. It is a 15. All right, cool. I think they must have, or maybe it's the body screws. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll look at it in a second. So 15 for the pivot. Yep, came right out with that. And we're actually getting the pivot. No, that's just a thick ass screw. Look at that. Lots of Loctite, which I think makes sense. <laughs> Most people aren't gonna take this apart and they wanna make sure with the button lock that it doesn't come apart, right? So let's grab a T8, but I think that's where this is a little different. I think, what's this, T8, all right, let's see. Yeah, no bueno on the T8, but it's not a T6. So I think it's a T7, that's what I was thinking about. I said T9, T7, so let me grab a T7 out of here. Look at, nope, don't let me get lucky. Gonna be one of the smaller guys. T9. T8. T8. Oh, I might not have one just floating around in here. Nope. What's this? Maybe this guy. Yep, got it. All right, T7, let's try that. Yep, perfect. So I think they make their own hardware. It's a little odd that they go with T7, um, just because, you know, most people aren't going to just have one laying around. Um which might make it difficult. I'm wondering if I can leave this screw in. Nope, they both go into the liner. All right. Top comes off. Nice, the spring just stayed in there. So here's the spring. They're actually using Delrin bearings, so there's, there's honestly no need to swap bearings, which is cool. So um, I might do it just to show you but I can't open it right now, I don't know why. So here's the spring button mechanism. You see that little chamfer in there, or that little spot right there? 
I think there's something going on in here that gives it a little added um, protection in terms of uh, lockup. Cannot get the spring out. There we go. Just remember, Kev, spring goes tits up. Okay? Spring goes tits up. It's going to be important. It's interesting. That little bit goes into here or here. Not the other side. Couldn't get the blade off. There we go. And then here's your button. Should just come out. There's your button. I put a little bit of uh, oil on it myself, so that's where that came from. But just to show you. And then we have a stop pin. And we have a captive pivot, which is awesome. And we have another Delrin bearing. They look like quarter inch, so I can swap these probably. We'll see. And we have a backspacer. Let's grab a picture so that we can show the disassembly. I always forget to do this, and then I don't have a thumbnail, and I'm posting disassembly videos with a thumbnail of a full knife, which makes it a little bit, you know, silly. I'll do one like that, one like that. Put this here, put the stop in here, a little spring here, pivot here. There you go. What do you think? Looks good. Let me grab my phone. <clears throat> Sorry, it just makes it easy. Do it with my phone. Bang, bang, bang. Cool. All right. So uh, these are going to be quarter inch. So you'll see here, I will drop this in the 1 16th slot perfectly won't go in here obviously it goes in there so 1 16th and then the pivot is going to drop right on our quarter inch guy right here not six millimeter quarter inch all right so you can use quarter inch bearings on a six millimeter because well it's a little bigger people get away with it that is a lot of loctite though sheesh you might have to scrape it off we'll see uh, quarter inch, one sixteenth skiff bearings. This is what you're going to want. Now you're going to ask me the same question. I'm thinking why, why change them? Right? Is there really a reason? Well, there's one reason I can think of. You have 13 balls in each of these bearings. That's 26 balls total. This one has, let's see the top there. Okay. We'll count that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you have 10 balls, 20 total. So we're adding six ceramic balls to the mix, okay? So what does that do? Well, it's gonna add stability because you're gonna have less space between balls, which obviously is gonna give you better lateral strength. That's one of the main things I love about skiff bearings. So you get that. You're also gonna get a little bit of added smoothness because you have more ceramic balls covering more surface area, right? Does that equal more drop shut? No, it really doesn't. Honestly, it might equal less because I have more balls making more contact, better lateral strength, maybe not as drop shut. Does it matter in this case? No, because it's a button lock. The other advantage, phosphor bronze cage versus a plastic cage. Now, the reason you would go with a plastic cage is you don't want to use a uh, lubricant. Maybe you don't like to oil your knives. You don't have to with this because the phosphor bronze needs a little oil. These don't. So there's arguments for both. <clears throat> Just, <clears throat> excuse me, laying it out there for you. But <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and swap it. I'm going to get a drink. Got a Dr. Pepper cream soda. Your boy <clears throat> is trying to cut back on the sugars, but... You know, moderation. Just don't have to drink one every single day. All right. So let's clean up our uh, Loctite because we got a lot here. First thing I'm going to do is grab... <clears throat> Man. Been dealing with... I don't know, it's allergies or something. Just had like a frog in my throat for weeks all right this is hopefully gonna just pick off yeah nice all right pick 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 get out of here nice all right that that was way easier than expected 
I got this pick set on uh, County Comms website. You can use my code, LeftyEDC, over there. Get 10% off and uh, pick up whatever you want. They got all types of stuff for really affordable pricing. I have videos unboxing a bunch of stuff, so check that out. I need the bigger driver. So we're going to get a lot of black goo probably here. No, not bad at all. All right, then we're going to clean the pivot out because that's probably got, yep. It's caked in there too, excuse me. Scrape that out. I'm gonna take the driver over top, go with the smaller one here, put the T7 in, just kinda twist it in there. Let's see what we get. Not much, cool. It all stayed on the uh, screw, which is good. All right. So we do have oil of some kind in here. So let's clean that up. There's no washers. It's uh, polished titanium, which is pretty much what you see across the board in US manufacturing. Um, not a lot of guys use washers when they're using titanium scales. Just something that they do. I don't know why. Don't know what the deal is, but uh, it works. So not complaining. Cleaning up all these parts. We'll see, I might add oil again to the plunge, but we'll see. All right, pivot goes in like so. You can see the notch on the pivot. Drop that bad boy in, ABW. By the way, these drop on the 27th. Hopefully this video will go up before that. I didn't know that when I did the unboxing. I tried to put it in the description and everything, but there are some dropping on the 27th uh, on their website. So check it out. I'll link it down below. Pop this in there. It's our button. And then remember, this one goes tits up. I don't notice any oil on it, so I'm going to leave it dry like that. Okay, it pops in. Nice. Very, very good. Okay. Now, skifferoons. Looks like I used these skiffs before or something because they're already sort of patinaed, which is fine. But they are a rolling, which I like. And this guy. Yeah. All right. I got to get the blade on first, don't I? So got to figure that out. Let's deal with that real quick. So this has to pop on. I'm just not sure if it's going to be easy or not. So let's see. Okay. It was easy. And it just worked. How come ProTech does it where it's all goddamn finicky and it's like impossible to get your... You know, it's not impossible, but it's a pain in the ass to get your knife together when you have a ProTech, isn't it? You got to, like, turn it a certain way to get the blade on. How come everybody else can do it where it just kind of drops in, you know? I want this straight. It was all crooked. See how it's crooked? I guess when it gets punched down, it'll go straight. But see, I don't want that. All right. That's good enough. All right. Hopefully, that's fine. We'll see, obviously. If it's this easy, I'm gonna be freaking impressed. So this has to go in that hole, obviously. Everything else just kind of clicks, okay. Pivot first, let's say. Come on, baby, do it by hand. So she said. I just want to get it going. There we go. Why am I doing that? I don't know. It's working. So I'm doing it. <laughs> Body screw to start holding things down. Shh. 
shift it. It's going to get in the right spot. There it goes. All right. Pick it up. <sighs> All right. I don't even know if the knife works, so let's just see if it works. Okay. Sounded fine. I don't think it's tight yet. Let me get the clip on. Could set it up lefty at this point, but um, I'm going to pass this around basically right after this because I've spent enough time with it. I want other people to get a hold of it. It's on a barrel, looks like here, just so you know. These are not. I don't know. All right, let's see if we can center it. Yeah, we still had a little room there. Perfect. Perfectly centered. This could be... All right, let's calm down, kids. Let's calm down a little bit here. Let's calm down a little bit here. Whoop! No play. No rock. Yeesh! A little bit of play here. But I think we had that. Pretty sure that was there. I mean, it fires just like it did. Has that little stick, but it's not bad. And here, that spring just popping. Because it's like a nipple spring. Listen to it. That is locked up. I don't know what else to tell you. Listen to that. There... I'm told that there's some kind of small chamfer somewhere and it locks into that and that helps with the lockup. I mean, if you don't feel secure with that, I don't know what to tell you. Am I going to sit here and beat it to death to try to test it? Probably not. Nothing. Didn't do anything. And it just, I mean, I like it. I like it. Question is, do I want to add a little bit of lube in there? No, feels good. Occasionally you get a more sticky feel than other times. And that's got to be the shape of that spring. I'm wondering if they can get a flatter spring with the same tension. And that way you won't have any... I think there's like a little variance in how it disengages because that spring probably pushes this way or that way because it has that little nipple at the end. Does that make sense? That would be some feedback if, for some reason, if you guys watch this, Michael, if you watch this, I don't know if you could <clears throat> get a flatter spring, just like a, you know, so it's circular on both sides and it fits better into that pocket um, because I think that little nipple is going like, mm, 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 depending on how it's seating at that time, but... I don't know what else I could do here. This is beautiful. So let's uh, Loctite it, right? AKA, y'all know me. Um, tighten that down just to see. We are perfectly centered. We are popping like it's hot. No play in any direction. And I mean, a little bit of wrist, but <clears throat> the skiffs have not even started to wear in. Are they necessary? No. I don't think skips are necessary in this one. Will you do it anyway? Maybe. Some of you guys might want to do it. I get it. Um, I did it anyway. Just because I'm me. Tighten that down all the way. Center. Yeah, yep. Popping. Swinging. Uh, I, got no, I got nothing here. I got no excuse not to glue this son of a bitch. Just clean the screw. I'm gonna do it one more time. Make sure there's no oil in there. Get any kind of oil out. And we grab the glue. Kev, why are you using super glue? That's crazy. I have a video all about it. Hands shaking. Great. I need a drink. Just kidding. Quit drinking. 
a long time ago. Centering, good. Pops, swings. No play. Oh my god, dude! Thing's a freaking bank vault. Let's uh, let it sit for a second there to cure. Not sure if it would loosen on its own or not, um, but you know. And I'm gonna put these in the pouch, and I'm gonna confuse everybody that gets this knife next. But hey, I would like them to know I did, I did fudge with it. I had to, guys. I've been trying not to as much, but you know what? Now's my chance because uh, these knives, once once the pass around, once it gets into pass around, it's like six months before I see it again. So the odds that I will get it back at all, first off, because um, sometimes, you know, somebody ends up keeping it, give it away, whatever. Um, so the odds that I get it back and then the odds that I am going to skiff it then are pretty rare. Um, so I'd rather do it now. Man, this is a beauty. I might just buy one. If he does 80s, I might just buy one. So I don't have to wait for the pass around to be over. That's how much I like this. And I, guys, I really like... Basically, at this point, I despise button locks. You guys know this. So the fact that I'm loving all over this thing, I think should be a good indication to you guys that it's good. By the way, all my disassembly tools are linked down below. Um, they're all, you know, pretty cheap. And uh, you can pick them up with those links. It does help the channel. Some of them are affiliate links. Some of them are not. Um, but if you want this tray or this, uh, this tray, you can check out Tinker Force. Obviously, skiff bearings, if you want to pick them up, you can use my code LEFTYEDC. That'll save you 10% off at skiffworkshop.com. And, um, you can also pick up the finger bit and the, uh, bearing size tool, which is awesome. And I'm just uh, milking a little bit of time here. So, yeah, there's a little bit of play here, but, you know, it doesn't bounce, which is nice. And you don't feel it here. Oh, my God, that thing hammers, doesn't it? It's wild how he did this with a button lock. And you saw it's pretty much a standard button lock in construction. He just took his time and dialed it in. Like, even left-handed, I struggle so hard to reverse flick lefty uh button lock sorry because i'll show you because what happens is i get on the button here and when i'm on the button i depress it and then it kind of like leaks out the knife the detent kind of like fails so it depends on where i can grip if i can grip right here like it's just awkward you know i have to avoid the button um and then there that's what happened there i was i flicked it and my finger hit the button so now it's loose so it's apt to fail and come back down on me. For some reason with this knife, my finger lands perfectly over the button. But look, the button barely comes out. Like this is it closed. It's almost flush with the scale. Then you fire it and it's just sticking out a little bit. It's in such a good spot. And honestly, that little bit of stick helps because you're less likely to close it on accident. You're not going to just accidentally push it a little bit. Like doing this, it doesn't, uh, that's what it is. That's what he did different. He made it so there's not just like slop. It's just, right? There's, there's a lot less slop in it where on a normal button lock, you can push it a little bit and it'll kind of like, see that? It'll kind of be like loose. This, it's harder to do that. You have to put a good amount of pressure into it to cause that. So honestly, the stick is like a good thing here because I can put my finger here, fire it, and then I don't have that issue. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. Now, if you hold the button and let it release like this, it'll be way easier to disengage, just so you know. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I like this one too. 
So th this was a bad example. I've never reverse flicked this though, I don't think. Did I? Yeah, see I always end up on the button like this. See how loose that is? Check this out. I'm on the button. Not loose at all. No play. This thing is a fucking masterpiece in terms of button locks, dude. I love it. Sorry, I know. I'm sitting here raving about it, but... It, it does not get better than this with a button lock. I have handled so many button locks over the last year that I hate myself for it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But this, by far... The best one. And I'm trying to think. I just had another one recently that I that I liked. A lot. Oh, it was the penguin. Um, but this one crushes it. Crushes it. I, I don't know if it's the American made factor or what. I mean, and this is fantastic. You can go pick this up, by the way, at traditionalpocketknives.com. I'll, I'll link them. They're linked down there. Um, you can use code LEFTYTPK and get uh, five bucks off. This is 160 bucks. It's an S90V in titanium. That's fantastic. It is. It's fantastic. And the quality and craftsmanship for the price are great. Okay. This knife is $329, I believe, starting. And it is well worth that money. Um, I think anybody else making these in the US would be selling these for $800 and getting away with it. It's that good. I mean, this is better than anything Tactile's made. Um, to me, I would take this over any Chris Reeve. I know. Sorry. Hinderer, Medford. Check, check, check. Um, you know, what else is there? You know, Oz Machine Company. Oh, that's a tricky one. Those are so good. But the price, this kills it, right? Koenig kills it on price. Um, you know, is it Koenig quality? It's not quite there, but it's fucking good, man. <laughs> I think it's just the stick you're going to have to get over. So some of you guys are not going to be able to get over that. But that's your that's your safety, right? That's what's keeping it locked up, I think. Uh, stronger than most button locks because it has that extra little oomph. And it requires a click, you know? But to me, that's a positive, not a negative. Um, I love this blade too, by the way. I want to show you how it cuts. Let me let me grab uh, let me grab something. Paper. What else I got? Is that my name on it? No. All right. We'll cut some paper and cardboard here. That's good. Cool. Trying to get fancy over here. Oh, curly cues. Almost. Almost getting them. Start at the end, all the way out to the tip. Freaking phenomenal. Freaking phenomenal grind on this thing, dude. It's hard to do on camera, by the way. Just... Get out of here. Trying to get two for one. Is it the sliciest knife ever? No. Is this thick ass cardboard? Yes. That's double wall, right? You tell me. I don't know. Um, so I think if I had like Amazon box shit here, um, I don't want to cut all my boxes up. Oh, here's one. Like here's a thinner cardboard, right? 
Again, is it the sliciest knife in the world? No. Is it a thin, beautifully done, sharp as shit grind? Yes. And it's a good stock. I think this is a perfect all-arounder. Like, this is going to get the basic EDC task done, getting into boxes, cutting cardboard and shit. But I think you could beat on this a little bit. And I think with this lock being a little bit more secure, you could actually rely on it a little bit more. It has no movement up and down. Most button locks have just a little bit. You know what I mean? Um... Here's that cord. Shit, we're just doing a cutting demo now. Oops. There we go. Yeah, I mean, it's just gonna fucking breeze through this. Come on. This is nothing. I mean, this is not a great test either, but... Whoops. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just... Uh... What else can I do? Here, give me a piece of, piece of cardboard. I'll cut on top of it. See if it slices well. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm doing a terrible job because I'm on a piece of cardboard. There we go. See that? See that? A little pressure, boom. Cuts right through that shit. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. I love it. I love the blade shape. Um, you know what? I'm, I'm even going to, in my title, I'm going to say and cut test. And I'm going to count that shit. You guys count that, right? That counts. I didn't just cut paper. I cut fucking rope <laughs> and cardboard. It counts. I don't have any zip ties up here. Otherwise, I would do that. Uh, but I don't have any. Do I? No. Come on. You know what we should test sometime? Let's try this. How it cuts these little plastic fuckers. Let's see if it can do it. Let's try this right here. Got him. Try this side. Oh yeah, did we uh, did we nick her? Nope. Double check it. Look at that. Look at that. Not that it should uh, chip on something like that, but you guys saw that axial fixed blade. Um, so cut test complete. This is a badass mofo, is what this is. I love it, man. Wow. I'm more excited than I thought I would be after this. So, this is why I get it. I get it. All you guys who are like, you gotta, you gotta use the knife or you can't review it. It's like, yeah, I use every knife. Um, I don't necessarily cut all that shit, but I use every knife. Don't you worry. Unless I don't. But anyway, <laughs> most knives I actually do use before I review them. And if I don't, I tell you. But this is one reason you guys say it. Because it, it does make you really uh, appreciate a knife more when it does a good job. So I think I'm going to leave it there. It's 35 minutes of rambling and babbling and uh, praising this knife. Michael Martin, you absolutely destroyed this. The Model 1 button lock, in my opinion, is your best model. It's my favorite knife you've come out with. And I love uh, the Model 1 and Warney. The Model 2 was sick. This thing is special, man. Um, can you make me one with 80s camo carbon, please? Um, you know, just let me know when you do, and I'll, I'll pay for it. And you can send it over. <laughs> you know what would be sick? Uh, like, blacked out handles with this milling. With camo car or 80s and a satin blade would be sick, or even this blade. But I just want 80s. Give me some 80s in there, or Flow Party, or something different. Uh, I'm not a big USA guy, but I mean, I still love it. Man, it's good. 
I can't get over this thing. All right, I love you guys. Uh, pick one of these up on the 27th. You have my recommendation. Highly, highly recommend. Top of the list, recommend this knife. All right, love you guys. Hope you have a great day, and uh, I'll catch you later. Peace.